So I'm always look on the lookout for these things where you can like easily add a piece of personalization to it and flip it for a, for a, for a profit. And people don't usually see that. Hey guys, and welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing crafts and DIY projects. We've got a special guest on this edition. We've got Henry Ma from Ricoma Embroidery Machines. And I was on Henry's channel recently, so I thought I would have him here on The Sewing Report. And I'm more of a novice with embroidery machines, but Henry is an expert. So I thought it would be great to have someone who knows a lot more than me about embroidery machines to answer some of your questions. Welcome, Henry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen, for, for, for having me. And yeah, it was great having you on our channel. That was a great talk. So definitely honored to be here and, and to be able to provide any value to your audience. Great. All right. So Henry, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background with embroidery machines and the business. Sure, sure. So, um, I mean, I started out from a background that has nothing to do with this industry. So uh, very much uh, in a different world back then. So I, I started out in, in finance, actually. So um, kind of, uh, you know, one, 180 turn and and as far removed from embroidery as you can get uh, I used to you know help different companies go go IPO raise raise capital so very much in the in the investment banking uh, space for a few years before I kind of um, you know joined this business and then um, started realizing what big of how big of a potential embroidery and, and custom apparel in general could could be right so um, started noticing that embroidery is everywhere with with regards to you know people wearing it um, um, different companies would, would need different uniforms. And so um, really enjoy the journey of being able to help people kind of get started in this business and navigate the nuances of um, you know what it takes to, to be successful in this business, um, the, the tips, the tricks, kind of passing on that knowledge. And I've uh, found that a lot more uh, interesting and, and uh, be, be able to help those people along the way and see the success stories of them being able to achieve their dreams in this business. So out of curiosity, what was it like for you when you first started trying to use these embroidery machines uh, just like any one of our customers that has absolutely no experience with with embroidery whatsoever it was kind of like just starting from the ground up you know learning every component of what what the machine you know uh, is called um, learning how it works and then actually getting in there getting hands-on and and embroidering uh, things right hooping an actual garment all of that is um, I, I would say I started out um, just like any one of our customers that has no 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 experience in this space whatsoever and just learning Learned little by little to now knowing you know what every you know even the insides of what uh, of the of the different uh, parts and and sensors and uh, knowing all of those but it took uh, you know uh, a, a learning curve but I think it was a uh, it was definitely something that I as I always say it's not rocket science it just kind of takes time right yeah. it takes time and, and it takes practice that's a really good testimony too that you don't have to be super into sewing to learn how to use an embroidery machine Literally, I, I feel like anybody could learn to use the machine. Is that something you would agree with? Yes, and, and we've seen kind of like the entire spectrum of, of experience, right? Having dealt with so, so many clients of ours, um, it could be people that, you know, has started out with a single needle and now transitioning to a multi-needle. It could be someone that just like, hey, I found embroidery online and I found that this was fascinating or saw as one of our uh, shows and then start wanting to get into embroidery, but no, knows nothing about threads or tension or bobbin um, and just, you know, jump, jump right in and after after doing the training is able to run their their first job so um, it's it really is not rocket science there is a learning curve but as with uh, anything you know um, I, as I always say like pr practice doesn't make perfect and you're always learning but uh, practice makes progress so every time you're you're doing something you learn something new and that experience builds along the way that is so true if you really want to learn anything you just need to put in the time and the effort to, to try to do it and I feel right. like for a lot of things, they're, they're definitely possible. So I solicited a, some questions from some of our viewers and I came up with some of my own um, to okay. try to help folks out there who may be having embroidery issues or just have questions about what it is. Uh, so the sure. first one is, what are some common mistakes beginners make with embroidery machines? I think that question I can tackle in, 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 in two different ways. I mean, obviously on the embroidery side, like purely um, doing, doing the embroidery part, there are common uh, errors like uh, not threading the machine properly, uh, putting in the bobbin backwards. I mean, I've made some of these rookie mistakes uh, when I first started out. So it's kind of a l learning process, not putting in the needle properly so it's backwards. And then when your thread keeps on breaking, you're like, okay, what's going on? But then you look into the details, you realize, yeah, it's these like, 
like small things that's causing it to 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 go off right um and then other things like not hooping the garment garment properly you know i've had ones where um the the garment was not hooped properly and it, and it fell out of the hoop as it was embroidering and that's something that you know um some some common errors where uh, you you don't you don't you don't tighten the screw on the on the hoop tight enough you don't you don't hoop the garment properly and all of that can cause embroidery issues um and then i think the the second part to this is uh a common mistake that i see people making when kind of jumping into the embroidery business um is uh, not forecasting where their business is gonna be in the in the future and and in the very near future, right? Um, obviously, starting in embroidery, it's it's an investment that you that you have to make, but. Um, you, you can quickly outgrow the uh, the investment if you don't think of the farther ahead down the road. So um, there's this kind of saying going around on different em embroidery groups and, and things like that, where it's like, hey, if you're looking to invest in a machine uh, to do embroidery for a uh, for a business, um, you wanna you know uh, buy the machine with the biggest embroidery area that you that you can afford. And that's kind of like the general rule of thumb that people go with, where it's like, hey, what what machine should I get? Well, it's like get the biggest hoop within your budget, right? Because what people realize is, oh, I start out with something small and then three months later, uh, business is really picking up. And now it's like, I just made an investment um, that I am outgrowing and uh, I would have to, you know, I am being limited by the type of things that I can do. So I think that's also a common mistake more on the business side and, and um, wanting to start out in, in, in embroidery. People kind of uh, don't forecast, you know, three to six months down the road, uh, their effort and what that level of effort is gonna translate into terms in, in terms of business. So that's something that uh, also um, a lot of people have mentioned in our groups. That is really good advice. Okay, so the next question is for someone starting out, what are some easier embroidery projects that they can do to get their feet wet in it? I guess going back to the first question, another common mistake people make is, yeah, starting out with something that's very difficult, especially they have uh, when oh, they have yeah. no experience, and then they 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 get frustrated and it's like, oh, why isn't it working? Well, there are certain items that are harder to do than others, right? Like a, a typical example is caps. People uh, people love to do caps, but um, caps are are harder. I mean, it's a it's a curved surface. It's not a flat flat surface. So there are different techniques that you would need to do uh, to embroider a cap uh, properly. So what I generally recommend uh, people doing when starting out is just to go with something flat, anything, anything flat. You can find a piece of fabric, like like scrap pieces of fabric to, to practice on, just to kind of uh, you know get simple designs done. Um, maybe a, maybe a t-shirt, maybe a polo shirt. Um, if you want to kind of you know do some stuff for as gifts, maybe do something like um, any any monograms on on a, on a t-shirt or uh, monograms on a on a baby bib. I've seen people do that as well kind of starting out just very simple things and don't worry too much about the uh, the, the digitizing aspect uh, where you have to you have to go into the software and design the logos um, go ahead and find kind of a platform or, or a site where you can just download um, pre digitized designs that you can just pop into your machine and, and get started and these are pre digitized so that you know that it works and that's not like another element of, uh, of error that could potentially happen if you're not digitizing your design properly so um, and 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 speaking of that you know we we do have a platform that kind of is a subscription service to download these pre-digitized logos um, it's kind of like kind of like a stock stock photo site but but you know pre-digitized um, in in embroidery designs and so uh, you know for for your viewers who are interested in signing up for that we have made a special code uh, where they can get a three-month trial on that uh, platform if they sign up through through you very cool thank you so much Henry can I use that code as well yeah definitely yeah you got a bunch of you know um, different designs that, that you can download and then you just pop it and, and it has different formats too so it's not tied into a specific machine that you have so you can download in the in the format that that your machine reads and then just pop it in and start doing a project so don't worry about the the designs worry about kind of mastering the craft of the actual embroidery very cool. And what's this? Uh, what's the website people can go to? Oh yeah, sure. It's it's called Hoopmade. So H O O P M A D E. So it will kind of like link that in the in the All description right. below, and and then you know we'll we'll get you that code where your viewers and yourself can get a a three months trial to that to that subscription. All right, I will definitely check that out. Thank you so much. And I think that's good advice. Like digitizing is seems a little bit complicated for a total mm -hmm. beginner. So yeah, I've I've stick to stuff that I I I've gotten designs on Etsy or like. 
you know, embro yeah. embroideringdesigns.com or other places. But when exactly. you're first starting out, you don't want to have to add that as like an additional thing you got to do. So I think that's really good advice. Yeah, it's it's overwhelming at times, right? Like you're starting out and you got all these things going on. And so uh, take one element out of the equation and just focus on, hey, let me learn my threads and bobbin and hooping and the techniques that I need to do on the machine and not worry about kind of how to, how to digitize. That can always come later. Yeah, there's already enough stuff you can potentially mess up. <laughs> why, add, <laughs> yeah. why add more headache? Okay, so my next yeah. question is, what are basic things you should do to maintain and care for an embroidery machine? And is this process different for single needle versus multi-needle multi machines? Mm -hmm. And I think in general, I mean, there are, there are some overlap between single needle and multi-needle, because uh, I mean, they kind of share the same parts and kind of the same design. Uh, but yeah, I mean, th definitely a multi-needle will have different spots of maintenance that are that are um, gonna, gonna um, be different than a single needle because you have m multiple uh, colors of, of thread. So it has a color change, color change system where you would need to you know, do the maintenance on that as well. But in general, um, you want to keep your machine uh, well oiled, especially in the rotary hook area where it kind of makes that loop between the uh, top thread and the bobbin thread. Um, that is kind of like the heart of the machine. So um, with continuous use, you want to you want to be able to oil that properly. Usually, you know, one to two drops of um, sewing machine oil uh, on that area um, for every about four to five hours of continuous use. So uh, if you don't kind of keep that uh, keep that area uh, well oiled, it can cause issues. Um, and also, I generally would recommend people to um, take off their needle plate and make sure that you clean out any lint or um, you know excess thread that's that kind of kind of builds up underneath after you do so many projects you want to make sure you clean that out and just keep your general sewing area and sewing um, you know sewing arm area clean so that it, it avoids any dust build up and things like that all right great and that actually was one of our viewer questions uh, so one awesome. of our viewers asked my brother embroidery machine does does not require oiling. I do put a drop of machine oil on my embroidery foot occasionally. Should I be oiling my carriage? Yes. So uh, I assume with the carriage, you mean like the, the sewing arm, which I, you know, that, that there's kind of like different term terminology for it. But yes, you should absolutely be oiling um, your carriage or the or the sewing arm, especially in the rotary hook area. Um, and it doesn't have to be excess oil, right? You, if you oil mm -hmm. too much, it can also cause an issue where when it's embroidering, kind of drops of oil are coming up to, to the fabric. So you don't want that to, to, yeah. to happen. But, um, you know, one to two drops of sewing machine oil on the rotary hook area, uh, obviously take out the, the, the bobbin when you do that so it doesn't get on the bobbin um, but that keeps the rotary hook um, well oiled so that uh, it doesn't make any like grinding noises or it kind of because uh, you know that is spinning at a high speed at a high frequency so you don't want that metal piece to be damaged in, in, in any way okay and for people who are pretty new to embroidery machines um, how can they get to the rotary hook so it, the, the rotary hook is typically where you place the place the bobbin so it's in that carriage uh, carriage area right underneath the needle plate so you know when your presser foot goes down towards the needle plate area um, you can you can unscrew that and then you can access the uh, the rotary hook there it's just like us like a circular hook and that that's what spins uh, spins to kind of make the knot between the top thread and the bobbin thread so you can either access it in the place where you you know any opening where you put in the the bobbin that's typically where you can access that that's interesting because when the machine says like non oil you kind of assume like don't oil it ever but mm -hmm. it's, but it's yeah. okay to oil that part. That's cool. I will start doing that because I have not been doing that. So right, right. And again, it's it, yeah. Every every machine is a little different, but um, you know, I, I don't think there's a machine that can, that's truly uh, non-oil. You know, for the for the rest of time because like <laughs> it, it is it, it is like m metal pieces, right? Yeah. So uh, when when those are kind of running at high frequency, they tend to uh, create heat, and if you don't keep it well lubricated, it can cause issues. So maybe not as frequently you know depending on on the on the usage but definitely you know one to two drops every few hours of use of, of continuous use and um, I typically want to um, I typically recommend people to when they start out like a, like an actual session maybe like um, they have a few pieces to, to to do to do your general maintenance then so you know that everything is well well prepped before you get started so I typically do the oiling then. all right I'm gonna have to start doing that thanks Henry <laughs> all right so the next question is uh, this is also a viewer question can you talk about portrait and photo software 
and what software is needed to create your own designs. Okay, great, yeah. Um, and those two questions are kind of like, uh, can, can be rolled into one because, um, I mean, photo embroidery is something that's very, very, very cool. Like you can literally um, take a photo of anything and then the the software will turn it into a portrait. And then the and then you load that into your machine and then it can actually embroider, um, uh, it, it actually embroiders this, this it, it's basically like a running stitch. And in different areas where it needs to be uh, darker or lighter, um, the running stitch will change in its density. And that's how it creates that kind of like shadow look for you know, for 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 the portrait that you're trying to do, so it's it's a really simple simple stitch, um, but the but you're able to use digitizing software, uh, and it's usually like an add-on because this is something that's like um, more more expensive, but uh, it's usually like a module add-on to some uh, digitizing digitizing software where you can have that feature and take a photo, um, upload it to your software, and then it will convert it into a running stitch for a format where where the machine can follow that and 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 embroider it out. So it kind of looks like a black and white photo, but um, you know, in areas where it's darker, it has more density in the stitch, in areas where it's lighter, it's it's more it's more thinner of a stitch, and that contrast creates that kind of like photo-y look. Very cool, that sounds awesome. Okay, yeah. that, all right, I'm, inter I'm interested in that. All right, so our next question is, uh, all right, let's get a little personal here. Henry, what are your favorite type of embroidery projects? Sure, so um, I would say that like my type, my favorite types of embroidery projects would have to be those that kind of um, still combines a little bit of personalization and 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 craft, right? Um, but can be easily flipped for a, for a profit. Like I'm always I'm always on the lookout for things that. Um, like okay, this would be really good to do embroidery on, and people would love it. And you can like buy it at the dollar store, and then and then flip it for like you know ten to ten to twenty dollars, right? So um, you know things like oven mitts, right? Something that is still kind of crafty. You can you can monogram um, someone's name on it. Um, something like a like a pit like a like a pillow as a as a gift, right? Like those things are still very crafty. But you can find like these things at the at the dollar store, or even like um, there was a big trend with like um, Walmart and 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 Target bags, like these totes um, that people would would monogram on, and those cost like four or five dollars, and then you can sell it on Etsy for like twenty, you know, That's or true. even thirty, right? So so I'm always look out, on the lookout for these things where you can like easily add a piece of personalization to it and flip it for a, for, a, for a profit. And people don't usually see that, but you can go to the dollar store and find a bunch of stuff that you can just add a monogram on and a simple design on, and people would, would eat that up on, on, on Etsy, you know? So uh, definitely That's something to, to keep in mind. And I've even, I've gone to Ikea and I've seen a ton of items. I've done blankets from Ikea. And another yeah. thing that I see a lot are those, uh, the pillow covers. They sell the pillow yes. covers for like five to ten dollars, and I mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of those would be e very easy to embroider. Exactly, it's a flat item. You know, it's yeah. it's it's not it's nothing hard. Um, but especially like if you're starting out as a, as a hobby and you're kind of like you know getting your feet wet, these are things that are um, easy to do, and you can create an Etsy account and you can just sell it on, on on Etsy, right? Like have people go go in there and um, choose to cut to customize it with their with their with their name on it, and then you can monitor Monogram it for you know, um, and and sell a five dollar pillowcase for for twenty. Yeah, Easy. man, I gotta start making money with mine, Henry. What am <laughs> I? What am I doing here? Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 like uh, it's the combination of you know still being creative and crafty, but looking out for these opportunities where you can like, oh yeah, this is like yeah, easy, easily able to. To, to be flipped, you know? So um, different oven mitts, napkins, people people love those things. Yeah, and quite honestly, obviously I sew, so I've made things like oven mitts and pillows and stuff. And yeah. it, it's not cheaper to make a pillow than it is to buy like a pillow cover from Ikea. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. it, so if you are looking at strictly from a business standpoint, it makes total sense to do what you're saying, to go and mm -hmm. find items that are easy to do and then and then just customizing them. So that's that's a really good thought. Thank you for that. Exactly, and yeah, and um, I, I, as I always say, like yeah, people do it for a hobby, right? And 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 I love crafts and and kind of you know having people be creative with their hobby, but why not make money at it at the same time? Like you're 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 enjoying your hobby and you're being creative and doing all these things, but at the same time, like hey, f um, you know, cover the cost of your hobby yeah. by just flipping that item, right? So it's it's very easy to do. Maybe I was thinking about doing as a series some sort of like experiment, like can I make money doing something yeah. sewing related? That, but just kind of document awesome. documenting like will I fail? Like will this be an epic fail? <laughs> will this work? And kind of going through all the steps I'm going through 
just to yeah. see it just because a lot of people the first thing that people say to you is when you tell them you sew is they're like you could start an etsy shop it's like could i really start an etsy shop will like I, would i make any money you know and I, then I you think, can kind of I, I prove it or can. disprove it so yeah that, i i think you can you can just you know the the key thing is maybe look on etsy for some of the you know really tr trending things yeah. and people things that are e easy to do right like um I, I know that totes and bags are so popular right people yeah. want uh like people in the south they, they would want their monogram oh, yes. on, on on anything you know yeah so. the monogramming when i lived in atlanta i like everything was monogrammed cups exactly you know like yeah. you know everything jackets People love Koozies. monograms in the South. They really do. And even yeah. when you see like, a, like I would watch Game of Thrones and then literally the day after, people would be selling merch on Etsy with like phrases from the night before, that sort exactly. of thing. So like exactly. you're right, you can really pick up kind of trending topics or things that are happening, current events and turn those into products, so. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, meanwhile, keeping keeping your your crafty side and still, you know, doing yeah. doing what you love, but at the same time, be able to cover that cost of the hobby, right? And maybe make a little profit. Or at least sharing with people, hey, this did work, this totally did not work, so we'll, we'll right. see. All right, so <laughs> okay, my, awesome. my last question is about Rakoma. So you guys sell commercial embroidery machines. Um, mm -hmm. Like what, if someone's interested in doing this as a business, like, can, I, can you kind of walk them through the basic steps of what they need to do? Sure. So, I mean, obviously, the the first thing to do, I always recommend that a uh, have your have your business plan. Know kind of you know one or two places that are kind of the low hanging fruit of where you can get business, right? And usually, people starting out in the in, in the in, in this in this field, um, they already have in mind like uh, like a local school that that uh, you know they have um, they have a friend in where where they can easily get in the door and kind of do some uniforms or maybe a local restaurant, a local business. So so have a few places in mind where kind of look in your network and see if you have friends that can intro introduce you to, to, to some, uh, some businesses that would need these type of services, right? And, send, and then once you have that kind of in the back of your head, then you know, uh, then you can estimate the, the type of volume that you're going to get and then kind of what investment you're wanting to make to kind of increase that volume once, once it kind of picks up and you kind of see how things are going. Um, and then with, uh, in, you know, in terms of the actual machine package, what we provide, um, it has everything you need to get started. Obviously, the machine, the the training, right, so that you can learn how to operate it. Um, but as well as the backing and the, and the supplies and the thread and the hoops, all, all of that is included in the package. So we, we want to take the kind of the hassle out of finding things that you need on the on the equipment side and have you focus on okay, where am I going to get that get that business? Um, how am I going to approach the local local businesses? Start somewhere local and get within your your network and kind of tackle those low hanging fruit of like yeah I know this I know this person I, I th they might need a couple of shirts I know this school you know a school back, back to school is a season is coming up um, that might be a good time to, to, to approach that school or any daycares or, or restaurants just kind of start thinking and compiling a, a list of local businesses that you know that will need that that service and then and then go, go from there and then get get the training on the machine and then really start start with a few orders and with the financing that we have really the you know you can you can cover your monthly payment on a commercial machine with just one simple order of like a dozen shirts, right? So um, it makes it very kind of low risk and, and for people to just be able to cover the monthly payment and then um, the the uh, the rest is profit. So if you're able to do just one order a month and you can do that consistently, that you're able to get started in this business. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and guys, check out the Rakoma website. I'm gonna link that as well is, and also all of Henry's uh, social media platforms. And if you guys also want to check out, Henry and I had a great conversation on his podcast on the Vercoma YouTube channel. So I'm going to link it here if you guys want to check it out. But Henry, thank you so much for, for joining us and sharing some of your best embroidery tips. No problem. And, uh, you know, love to, to do these kind of things. And, and thank you so much for having me on this show. Um, I hope the answers were helpful to your audience. And, and definitely any other questions, feel free to chime in below and, and I can chime in as well. Great. Well, Henry, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll be doing this again sometime in the future. Definitely, definitely. See you soon. All right. Bye, Henry.